BuilderDude35 here with some quick tips on how to counter slop distance. Slop distance is an important metric to mind when you're building an FLO or WRL robot because it's essentially a measurement of the inconsistency when your robot is driving around in millimeters. If you haven't already seen my video on slop distance and don't know what it is yet, I have a whole video explaining what it is and how it's measured and everything. But for this video, all you need to know is that slop distance increases with the taller wheel that you get. And I personally like to use taller wheels because I think their advantages greatly outweigh their disadvantages. That is, of course, opinion and not a fact. Everybody will have different wheels that they prefer. I prefer the taller wheels. Uh, but when you're using taller wheels, you also have to contend with a greater slop distance. And so these are the ways that I would recommend you counter slop distance if you plan on using tall wheels. Now using the rotation sensors that are built into the EV3 motors is great because they're pretty accurate, but I say pretty accurate because slop distance comes into play depending on what size wheel you have. And with taller wheels, the rotation sensors become less accurate because of the higher slop distance. So the biggest thing that you can do to counter slop distance is to rely on the rotation sensors and the EV3 motors a little bit less. You can still use them to get a roundabout estimate of where you are, but there are more accurate ways that you can help to improve your robot's navigational abilities, so to speak. And how to do this is to use sensors to assist your robot in moving around. Color sensors are very useful and they can be used for a lot of things in FLL. What you can use them for is for line following. I've got all kinds of tutorials on that, whether it be two sensor line following or proportional line following or two sensor proportional line following, which is something I plan on doing in the future. Or you could also use them for line squaring. And what line squaring is good for is getting your robot at the right angle, a 90 degree angle to a given line, and it also uh, sets your position to the right place. So either one that you use, or both, will definitely help improve your robot's accuracy in its position and navigating to a certain mission. Another idea is to use touch or ultrasonic sensors to detect your proximity to reference points like mission models or something like that. Like you could either bump into a mission model or see it X number of centimeters away and you could tell your robot to make a turn then or whatever using other mission models as reference points if you can. However, the one thing I don't recommend is using the wall as a reference point. That would seem like the easiest thing to do, but I've learned the hard way that the position of the actual mat can vary a few millimeters inside of the wall and that could end up uh, having your robot become a little bit off and as everybody knows if the robot's a little bit off in FLL that might as well be like five feet off or something like that so use mission models as reference points for your touch sensors and ultrasonic sensors but just don't use the wall now the last sensor you can use is the gyro sensor for measuring out your turns although I personally don't necessarily recommend that you use the gyro sensor for this purpose there are people who do it I don't recommend it and I explain why in a, a previous video that I had but it's certainly an option that's out there if you want to use it and don't let me stop you from using it if you really want to thank you for watching my tutorial this week if you liked it please subscribe for more tutorials and I'll see you next Thursday with next week's tutorial bye